And it, it's interesting to note that when we're moving, okay, in our experiences, okay, because uh, all life doesn't move. We only have movement in creation. And so it's like when we move from one place to another, go here, go to the store, wherever. In the personal sense, we're actually having experience and becoming more aware just by the movements, you see. And this is what we need uh, in the personal sense or in creation. So experiences like this, oh, come this way in this movement, that's giving him the experience, okay, of awareness as to what's taking place within creation because actually he's not moving. Everything's here and now, you see. So this is the fallacy of movement up and down and left and right. But the movement helps us wake up and gives us the experience until we recognize that we don't have to move, you see. Just like we get together and we have the Skype meetings, you know, we get to a certain place, we go have the meeting, then we leave and we go home. So again, it's a trip that has to be taken because it's somewhere else. You know, so just like we live in Mexico and, and if you want to visit us or we want to visit you, we got to take the plane and we got to fly there, you see, to other levels, dimensions or whatever. Mexico's a dimension. We all got our own dimensions, you see. And so the plane is just, uh, you know, that's just the idea that there was an experience or so-called movement involved again the movement equals experience that's all it's just this is what we need in our literal sense to understand because it's actually all invisible so until we see it we need to see something visible that confirms what we're doing you see Uh, many people have uh, met uh, Rebazar in the physical, etc. So the, the book is a confirmation. Uh, very simple. He's uh, he's he's on it. He's doing great. Yeah. He was also uh, in Ekenkar, wasn't he? Yeah. So and we needed all that experience uh, as a background to understand. Uh, you know, as we went through it, just like we went through grade school, and you taught grade school, and you taught the kids. We needed that. But we no longer need that. You see, we've moved on. So this is the new day, the new you. So yes, thank you. I remember one of the experiences and I hold it and I remember it. And this is where when I was in Huntington Beach many, many years ago and uh, uh, all the guides were on the pier and I was there and they were just standing around. And every time I looked at each one of them, they would just stare at me. So that's the experience all right again when yesterday when i said you know compare the earth to the uh, sun shining and in that comparison is the reality because it's invisible so the stare you're to recognize the stare and it's not about uh figuring it out literally okay so that's something that he has to do for himself. So recognizing what that means without the literal mind. And yeah, just like if we were you know, if there was something wrong with us here and we needed help, uh, we have to decide to go to the doctor. And so as we are willing to give up certain things or need help, of course, there's always help there and certain attachments. Well, uh, just like he asked, uh, the real guides are there and whatever you need. And it's a step at a time. And so it, when there is something like this or a process or a, or a procedure, you also have to give it time because, you know, many of these attachments that we have or things that we like or dislike or whatever, it takes time for them to kind of go away, you think?
So there's that part of it too. Sometimes they instantly go away. Uh, sometimes it takes many, many years, but we just, you know, we just keep at it to let go, let go. The whole idea is to let go until you recognize the real you. Yeah. And the difference. So it's a process, but yes, we need to decide to step up and say, oh, I want to let this go. You see, we need to do it. 